Good day, YouTube. This is Alexander Howard of the Audio Guild, and this is our third installation of our episode of Dar Wars. In this episode, we will be attaching the Akai MPC Studio software with Reason 9.5. Uh, Reason just as of May 29th started implementing VSTs in their software. If they were closed in, you would have to use what was in there or their rack extensions. So that being stated, this is Reason. It's opened up. I have the plugin. And again, as with all DAWs, we have a browser and instruments. And if we scroll down, I have the Akai MPC plugin as well as you can rewire FL Studio, Ableton, and any other DAW with Reason to have an expansive amount of outputs. That being stated, this is the MPC. Okay, I'm gonna close the browser. So, I'm gonna hit tab, which is turning the back of the rack in Reason. And I'm showing you that it has one uh, stereo output and then eight other stereo outputs. So again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's either eight stereo or 16 mono. They limited it. Don't know why. All right. So, and you can only have one instantiation of the plugin open. Otherwise you start, to, it won't even open but the effect would be to take up a lot of the processing power of your computer. So cutting this on and then we'll go to the other screen. And what do we have? We have the plugin. Now I understand that reason has just started this venture, but I beta tested for this. And in the beta test, I informed them that the plugin window consumes more than just one screen if you can see so i got my folder buttons on the opposite it's, it's bleeding onto the other screen ah uh, okay so i'm over here if we go over to the reason screen you'll see the plugin has occupied space on both screens and you can't customize this window so that was a a con for me it was a negative but it also I I'm hoping that they will have updates based off of the input from the beta testers and fix this um, what song do we have loaded up I'm gonna hit play just to hear what we have loaded up and again you in reason they don't even show and I guess that's again that oversizing of the screen but you don't even see the play buttons. You can hit the top of the record button and the overdub button, but they don't even show the buttons. Again, another con. All right, so let's see what song we have loaded up here. This is concentration. So going to take us back over to the reason screen. I have the plug-in attached to a mixer. So I'm gonna hit tab again and go back. And so I took all of the outputs and put it in this mixer. Again, it totaled up to eight. I could have just as easily put these on their own individual mixing channels. And so I guess I'll, I'll give you my reasoning behind that. This, this is a series of videos, so when you put them all together in chronological order, you'll see, oh, okay, it's a full-fledged situation. I put, I'm using a Behringer Control Fader 2000. So with FL Studio, I'm able to use, I have two of them, so I'm able to use them as a, a peripheral mixing desk. There are eight channels each, and if you give me a moment, sorry for yelling. 
that's one of them. That's a Behringer control fader. And it basically gives me eight channels, but there are banks, so I can shift the banks. Okay, sorry for yelling. So I attach these because in reason, if I go window and go to the main mixer, if I click the master mixer section, right click and I lock on my Behringer device to it, I can't use both of them. I can only use one so it'll pan down eight channels at a time. So me being witty, I decided, okay, going back to the rack, I'll keep my mixing channels out. I'll lock one Behringer to that and then I lock the other Behringer to this. It was a workaround. It works because they only limit you to 16 channels for the NPC anyway. So I'm gonna go back, hit play. Kick, snare, hi-hat, bass. As well as already getting the inputs from the NPC in, you can go to, we'll say window, and then we'll say sequencer. And you can also set up a MIDI clip. So, my clip. You can say. What happened? Oh wow, okay, so did you see that? I hit record enable and my whole audio thing just zapped out. All right. So MIDI track and then you would affect the NPC. And it's the same situation with that button in the NPC. So we're gonna go back over to that window. We're gonna go window we're going to say rack and then we'll go back over to the other window audio's dropping out not a good thing don't like that bam all right so what was i saying They only give you 16 channels going back over the, ah so we was talking about that window edit preferences and i was saying in the sequence window of reason because of that preference where we have it's not showing up one second off on it did go out for a second. Okay, so, and that's that's because I got a lot of USB devices. I have to go through what they call a interrupt request and figure out which device is sending out the same interrupt request message because it's cutting devices off, whether it be a sound card with a mic or the NPC. Either way, the point that I'm getting at is this area where the host DAW or NPC plugin is directly related to window oh hit okay window and then we'll say sequencer it's directly related to this window you gotta record enable the track and then why does it keep going out oh, it's not it's, they started uh c1 further up and that's that check track. If I go to another track, it should probably be a different result. Yeah, that's the bass. If I go to another track, that would be the pad. And 
So that's the whole parody of your, I would be able to draw notes in here. I didn't want to do that. Edit, undo, draw a clip. But you could draw notes in here. got sequences over there you could as well I'm gonna come back over here because they've made this a laborious process we do have the drag and drop option that's within the or export media or export audio option that's within the NPC software so I clicked it and then you just drag and you can drop and you drop the MIDI track over uh, I'm going to go back over to Reason so you can see the result of the drag track. Right here, I drug this track back over, which represents the sequence that was on the other screen. And this track isn't set to an instrument, but if I put, I'm going to hit close. If I put this track up here where the NPC is, it'll re-trigger the same sequence, if you get my point thus allowing you so you could go control and copy and then start setting up a sequence situation with this it's using the two i'm going to delete that because again i'm not trying to mutilate my sequence but you get the gist mixer channel goes into if I turn it around the master output goes into that one mixer channel and so by setting up a template that's one song I'll go back over to the NPC screen and I'll say songs already separated the tracks so I could hit play and first we go back over to the reason screen okay so that's 88 if I know any better the actual tempo is 95 and I'll hit stop and then I'll go to the song mode over in the Akai. Again, back and forth all day, people. So I got song mode open on the Akai. I'm gonna hit play over on Reason. Back over to Akai. And so you see this is a song that's already be that has already been sequenced is give me that bang you see one time give me that bang one time give me that bang one time electric one time this time sorry I just don't like the way the setup is working it's not conducive for me yet I'm working with it so ultimately same thing 
the the cons were the oversizing of the screen but it does have proper MIDI implementation another one of the cons was the limitation of tracks in FL Studio you got 16 stereo 32 mono and typically you should try to work in mono maximize as well as offering yourself headroom towards the end of your production <clears throat> So it only gave us 8 stereo and 16 mono. It had an oversized window, but it did have proper MIDI implementation. And it does instantaneously convert those tracks to audio. Uh, let's see if I have low latency as the converted audio. Yeah, low latency. Here we go. So, I'm going to take off the record enable. And so, I did that low latency song over on the NPC. And when I was doing the implementation with the DAW, I only brought over certain elements from the song using the cut and paste method that I showed you so I ended up in the end using drums from reason and then the other elements I kept I don't want to, I don't want to keep doing that anyway <clears throat> I'm sorry for yelling. it offered a level of flexibility where if I didn't want to depend upon sequences from and this is probably a good remixer slash uh, a person that's an engineer working with people that have various different types of equipment uh, I was able to say I didn't want to use the NPC drum sequence and now that it was over here and they're synchronized together I'll just switch those drums out. They stayed synchronized. I, th I thought that was great. That's just me. Sorry for yelling. <clears throat> so, uh, good MIDI implementation. Uh, the drag and drop feature worked excellent. Uh, the drag and drop feature did work in uh, FL Studio, but because its implementation was sturdy enough, I didn't even use that feature. The drag and drop feature also works in Ableton, but again, with Ableton, it's kind of like, why would I need to do that? I, it, it, it works. It's already implemented. So I don't need to drag and drop. So I guess they added that feature as far as for difficult or proprietary type of DAWs. Which reason would happen to be? Because it's 2017 and they just now introduced VSTs. So it, it's a good try. I just believe they should go back to the drawing board and, and hash out a couple of the issues that the beta testers mentioned. 